Hello, my name is Mark Thorin. I'm a staff scientist for mixed signal products at Linear Technology, now a part of Analog Devices, and I build application circuits for data converters. I'm going to show you the latest addition to Analog Devices line of high performance combined Nyquist and oversampling successive approximation analog to digital converters, the LTC 2500 32. The LTC 2500 is a revolutionary product that represents a new approach to high bandwidth precision applications such as automated test equipment, control loops, seismology, and precision data acquisition. Analog performance of the SAR core is second to none. Linearity is guaranteed two parts per million maximum. Offset drift is seven parts per billion per degree C. Gain drift is 50 parts per billion and the signal-to-noise ratio is 104 decibels at one mega sample per second. This level of precision means that, more often than not, other error sources in the signal chain will dominate. The LTC 2500 is the foundation on which to build your high-precision systems. Such applications have traditionally used Delta Sigma ADCs, but the LTC 2500 is much more versatile in many ways. 24-bit data from the SAR core is provided at full speed and with no latency on a dedicated serial port. The no latency data is also routed to a highly configurable digital filter backend that allows fine tuning of trade offs between frequency response, data rate, anti aliasing, latency, and signal to noise ratio with an SNR of 148 decibels at 61 samples per second. An important feature of this approach is that both no latency and filtered data are available simultaneously, and they are perfectly matched in both analog accuracy and in time. It's like getting two converters in one without having to worry about matching two separate devices. Let's look at some ways of making use of this feature. Consider a physical control loop application. The LTC 2500's digital filter can be chosen to match system dynamics. The no latency data provides a fast second opinion on what the system is doing so that unexpected, potentially destructive disturbances can be detected within a microsecond. Another way of using the two data streams is signal quality monitoring. Consider a vibration monitoring application where the expected signal frequency range is between DC and 1 kilohertz, and we can choose the filter accordingly. But what if something goes wrong, such as an unexpected failure mode of the machine, a broken EMI shield, or even a circuit failure causing high frequency oscillations, all of which could result in high levels of activity in the digital filter stop band, which will be invisible in the filtered output. Monitoring even a few bits of the no latency output Performing a simple calculation of peak-to-peak -peak or RMS variation provides valuable diagnostic information in these cases. The first bit of the LTC 2500's no latency output is an overrange indicator. So by monitoring only a single bit at each conversion, you can instantly detect an overrange condition that would otherwise be invisible in the filtered data and take appropriate action. Another aspect of this approach is that, unlike a Delta Sigma ADC, the digital filter can be chosen arbitrarily, and the LTC 2500 takes full advantage of this fact. Digital filter options range from a simple average of two readings from the SAR core to wideband, ultra-flat passband filters that greatly simplify analog filter requirements and numerous options in between. For any of the filter types, Increasing the downsample factor reduces the filter's bandwidth with a corresponding increase in SNR. The noise density from the SAR core is essentially flat. Therefore, a doubling of the downsample factor results in a near theoretical 3 decibel increase in SNR. Let's take a closer look at these filters. The LTC 2500 offers a family of sync filters, including sync 1, 2, 3, and 4 with downsample factors from 4 to 16384. A SYNC 1 filter is simply the average of a number of equally weighted samples from the SAR core. This produces a frequency response in the shape of a SYNC function plotted here on a decibel scale. 
For such a simple filter, there are some things it does very well. The output settles in a single data point, important for multiplexed applications or where minimizing delay is a concern. And while stop band rejection is not very deep, the noise bandwidth is half of the first notch frequency. This makes a SYNC-1 filter a good choice in systems where the dominant noise sources are broadband rather than noise at particular frequencies. One all too familiar disturbance is the ever-present 50 Hz or 60 Hz line frequency interference that tends to contaminate, well, pretty much everything. By selecting the correct combination of sample rate and downsample factor, there are multiple ways to produce a filter response that rejects particular frequencies. Stop band rejection is progressively increased with sync filter order, providing practical rejection of frequencies near, but not necessarily exactly at, a notch. The trade-off for this extra rejection is the increased settling time of the filter. Output data settles in a number of points equal to the filter's order. While sync filters are useful for eliminating broadband noise and interferers at well-defined frequencies, they do not have particularly good anti-aliasing properties for signals in several frequency bands. The spread sync filter is a sync-like filter for which the zeros have been strategically distributed in frequency to improve its overall anti-aliasing properties, combined with a very low settling time of nine output samples. As shown in this frequency response plot, any frequency above half the output rate will be attenuated by a minimum of 80 decibels. Thus, this filter is ideal for applications that may have strong interfering signals at any frequency above half the output rate, yet require fast settling and a well-behaved time domain response with no overshoot. This plot overlays the response of a simple 2-pole, 5 kHz analog anti-alias filter designed to provide rejection at filter images, which occur at multiples of the SAR sample rate. This is the essence of designing an anti-alias filter. Allow the digital filter to determine the in-band frequency response, while a simple analog filter deals with interferers near the SAR core sample rate. One trade-off for the low latency of the spread sync filter is its passband droop. The last filter option addresses this concern. Adding a flattening filter after the spread sync filter produces an overall response with plus minus one millidecibel flatness to one quarter of the output data rate and a stop band attenuation greater than 80 decibels. This filter also represents a balance between transition band steepness and a settling time of 31 output samples, considerably shorter than that of many delta sigma ADCs. Digital filter coefficients for all filter options are provided as text files on the LTC 2500 product page and are included in the Linear Lab Tools software package along with MATLAB and Python examples for calculating time domain and frequency domain responses. All of the plots in this video were generated by scripts included in Linear Lab Tools. Now it's time for some demonstrations. The LTC 2500-32 is a versatile device with lots of options, and analog devices provide several choices for quickly and easily evaluating and developing applications with the LTC 2500. Demonstration circuit 2222, along with P-Scope analysis software, will get you up and running in no time. P-Scope performs basic AC analysis functions, distortion, noise, intermodulation, and so on. If you'd like to do your own data processing, for example, wavelet transforms, autocorrelation, or your own proprietary algorithms, Linear Lab Tools provides access to this board through a simple API from MATLAB, Python, or other languages. The fun doesn't stop here. For more advanced application development, Demonstration Circuit 2390 includes two LTC 2500s, two 16-bit 50 megasample per second DACs, with all clocks derived from an onboard oscillator and LTC 6954 clock distribution divider. This board mates to the Socket FPGA demo board from Aero Electronics, which is controlled by a remote computer over a network connection. Several application examples for this setup are included in the Linear Lab Tools software package, and all FPGA code is open. Let's run a couple of them. 
We can trace out the digital filter response by producing a sine wave with one of the DACs and stepping the frequency. This script sets the LTC2500 filter mode to SYNC4 downsample factor 256. It then plots the theoretical filter response in blue, followed by the actual measured response indicated by red markers. The only visible departure from ideal is at very high attenuations, where the DAC's noise and distortion become significant. The example FPGA code also includes a basic proportional integral derivative controller with software programmable constants. An adjustable single pole RC circuit is used to emulate the response of a real physical system. Here, we're stepping the digital input to the controller and measuring the response with two different sets of PID constants while adjusting the model system's time constant. Once the response is dialed in with a model of your physical system, the actual system can be installed and tested. In such an application, a 16-bit DAC is often perfectly appropriate as the overall performance of the system is determined by the LTC2500. The LTC2500-32 provides unprecedented flexibility in high-precision, high-speed instrumentation applications. The evaluation boards, P-Scope, and Linear Lab Tools software will allow you to easily evaluate it for inclusion in your own designs, and the FPGA code will give you a head start on your own code development. For more information on the LTC2500-32, visit linear.com. Thank you.